watching KWWL. We've got you covered. This is the news at 10. They lost a family, they lost companionship, they lost a comfort zone. And it's a massive change. It's a really a cultural change that we're doing. That is our job. For people that cannot care for themselves, there's no one else to take care of them if we don't. Mental health professionals in Iowa say it's a push to help our most vulnerable citizens, but at this point, it's leaving many Iowa mental health patients out in the cold, unfortunately. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ron Steele. And I'm Amanda Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Now, if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with a mental illness, then you know it really can be a struggle to find the right care. Three years ago, Iowa began redesigning its mental health care system, shifting from county-based care to larger regions. You know, the recent mass shootings around the country have brought an awful lot of attention to the nation's mental health system. So tonight, we asked KWW reporter Michael Crow to look into what these changes might bring and have brought for Iowans already. And Michael Crow joins us now live in the studio with a special assignment report. And Michael, it sounds like a lot of people feel the redesign is a good idea, but it's not coming together as planned just yet. Well, we're almost three years into mental health redesign, and experts say it's all about raising the level of care for Iowans, but some say the redesign is creating problems of its own in transition, including a rapid closure of a major Lynn County care facility. On a quiet county road, just north of Cedar Rapids, the Abbey Center. For years, it was home to about 100 people with mental illnesses. People just like Wayne, who has Tourette's, OCD, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder. And socially, he tends to be somewhat of an outcast because of his symptomatology. And so the Abbey provided him a, a community. It provided him support and guidance and... Uh, a family, a community of friends. In Iowa, counties used to pay for mental health care services from local tax dollars. That was a problem for some. In 2012, Lynn County was $5.4 million in the hole, so they cut the Abbey Center's funding by $1.4 million, 60%. On October 1st, the center closed. The last straws probably came with the uncertainty of regionalization, what the regions are really going to pay for in the future in relation to residential services. Instead of each county paying for mental health care for its residents, Iowa is setting up multi-county regions. It's a push to make sure rural Iowans get the same care as those in metro areas. Providing good mental health care is important to Iowans because that is our job. For people that cannot care for themselves, there's no one else to take care of them if we don't. But legislators knew it'd be a tough change to implement, so they built in a $13 million transition fund. The governor vetoed that, and that created a shock wave in the whole community because it really made people feel that we didn't, we didn't live up to our, our promise. Full disclosure, Hatch is planning to run against Branstead next year. Branstead, though, says the transition money wasn't necessary. He says the additional $13 million in state funds wasn't in the best interest of taxpayers. Dan Strelner says the money wouldn't have kept Abby open, but it would have given them more time to find better placements for patients. As it stands, they were rushed, and eight patients left the facility against medical advice. We have really done them a disservice, and ultimately it'll cost our society. The problem is, is that what happens with many of these folks is that they end up in jail. And now the Abbey director says there's a gap in services. When you don't have those options for people when they need them, obviously they have to go somewhere else, which could be a homeless shelter, it could be jail, it could be to the streets, uh, it could be to a facility far away from their family or their support systems. That's what happened to Wayne. When Abbey closed, he went to a Johnson County facility. It's really problematic that these people were moved Moved because you, you, they, they lost a family, they lost companionship, they lost a comfort zone. The regional mental health care system doesn't come into full effect until next July, so there's still time to overcome these growing pains. I am very optimistic and very hopeful that as we move forward, this is going to correct itself, but it has been a rough transition and it's been some tough on some people that we, we are trying very hard to protect. I think overall, this in combination will be a vast improvement. The problem we have right now is we're, we're not having the transition funds. But either way, the Abbey Center is still closed, and Myers isn't happy. We put a dollar amount on these people, and because we didn't have enough money, now we're sending them all over the state, and that's what troubles me the most. 
Several state senators I've spoken with say they want to bring this transition fund back up in the next session. We'll see what happens. Ron and Amanda, back to you. Got some very good viewpoints there, Michael. Thanks very much. Next week, we'll continue the look into Iowa's mental health uh, problems and uh, the whole system overall. We've been doing this all month long. We'll continue it next Monday night right here. Yeah, Becca Haubegger will have lessons learned. Let's